will do for the American automobile. I ask all of you to think about what that will do for our nation. As I look and I try to project the future of this great country and land of ours, I always turn to the world of technology because nowadays things are moving pretty fast. And as I look forward into technology, I try to project things the same way that Presto Light illuminated the road. This coast-to-coast -coast rock highway will open the minds of merchants, residents, and elected officials. Now, I personally, I said I was going to be responsible and become an advocate for road improvements all throughout the nation because of a recent trip I had just from Indianapolis going all the way to Greenfield, Indiana. There were three of us. And after we traveled about nine miles, we were greeted by rain. Well, on the return trip, as darkness fell, our trip was further complicated by an even harder rain. And as if you know automobiles in 1912, we didn't have any hard covers on anything, so we got pretty damn wet. <laughs> and as we traveled and tried to guess our way along, we finally got to a spot where the road intersected with three other forks all going in different directions. Well, none of the three of us could remember which road we came in on. And the sky was about as black as the inside of your pocket. So as we tried to look on the horizon for some lights of Indianapolis, we couldn't see any, so the three of us decided to pull over and have a consultation. And as we stood there on the road, with our lights reflecting on the raindrops that were landing upon us, one of us noticed a tall pole with a sign on the top, which might have some direction as to where we should go. Well, we couldn't throw any illumination on the damn thing, so we decided one of us had to crawl up to the top of this pole and read the sign. So we all drew sticks, and I lost. I had to crawl up the sign, and as I was getting halfway up the pole, I realized my matches were in the inside pocket of my vest, and I couldn't have access to them, so down the pole I had to come. I took my matches, and I put them inside my hat, and after a good hard climb, I made it to the top of that pole. And as I stood there looking at the sign, I pulled up my matches, and I gave them a scratch, and before the wind could blow them out, it read, Chew, battle axe plug. <laughs> it was this experience that convinced me that there indeed was a call for road improvements in our great nation. Now, you know, I've had people call me a visionary. I don't know what they're talking about. I've had severe astigmatism since the day I was born. And didn't even, I didn't get spectacles until I was 30 years old. The one thing I am is I'm a businessman, and I like to fly quick, and I like to fly fast. There may be days I don't even know if I can see or think straight, but I tell you what, my world goes pretty quick. So if you want to join me, you come on along, because we're going to take a ride and we're going to make this thing happen. I often have said, I don't have the time to take the time. But on a September evening, right here in this building, Allison and I took the time. And I stood right up in front of this whole crowd, and I said, we must build this coast-to-coast -coast connection before we all get too damned old. And that night, we got over $300,000 in pledges. Within days, I got a note from Frank Sieberling of the Goodyear Tire Company. He was pledging another $300,000, and within 30 days, we had over $1 million in pledges. Of all the key contributors I targeted, the one who avoided me most was that asinine Henry Ford. <laughs> We were up in Detroit in Joy's office. We're filling out the Articles of Incorporation for the Lincoln Highway Association, and that unhelpful jackass Ford is sitting in his office on the other side of town <laughs> making a deal so he could buy the Lincoln Motor Company. Well, we elected Joy to be our president. And me? Well, I took on the job of vice president because I knew it was something I could handle. My job, go out and generate public support for this endeavor right here. So I organized the Hoosier Caravan. We had over 70, 70 trailblazers with their automobiles that were going to join me and we were going to mark our pathway west. And as we traveled, we were received with nothing but generosity, public support, positive feedback from Illinois all the way to Utah. I have to say probably the most difficult part of the entire trip was that night we spent in Grand Junction. My quarters were so infested with bed bugs I couldn't sleep. I had to get up in the middle of the night and go seek refuge atop of some local farmer's chicken coop just to make it through the night. But by the time we got to Nevada, 
Governor Oldie himself rode right along with me all the way to the California border, promising me that he would get support and endorsements from his elected officials. Well, I traveled from Indiana to California, huge success. Because on the 30th day, I got to sit down and write to Joy and tell him it will not be necessary for us to build one foot of roadway in California because they have been able to secure sufficient enough funds to finish the Continental Road within their own boundaries. That made the whole trip worth it to me. I, I got to say there was one miserable aspect of the whole expedition. And the miserable part wasn't the bed bugs, wasn't the Iowa mud pits, it wasn't the twisted wrists and the sore backs. It was the damn train ride on the way home. <laughs> you ride on a train, there's nothing to do but just look out the window. And trains, they don't go where you want them to go. When, am I, when I'm driving my automobile, I want to have the right to be able to turn right. So join me with this effort as we make all of this happen. Some people say, uh, Carl Fisher, he's tireless. I got four of them on my automobile, I don't know what he's talking about. Thanks for that. <laughs> what I mean.